Let us have a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you. Just thank you for your grace and your mercy, your goodness. We ask, Lord, that you will look down upon us, open up the ears of the hearers, cause them to hear and understand the word of God on tonight. Oh, God, impart, oh, God, your richness into our spirit, Lord, and let us receive it according to your perfect will. Use this vessel in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. All right, so we're going to be coming from the book of Jude. The book of Jude. Jude. And there is only one chapter to Jude, so you don't have to worry about what chapter. We're going to verse 20 through 23. Jude, verse 20 through 23. Amen. Again, the subject is building yourself and saving others. Building yourself and saving others. All right, that 20th verse says, But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, Building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. All right? So we have to make sure that we're taking care to build ourselves. All right? We are a brother's keeper, and we should do the things that, that are needful, amen, to assist our brothers. But we need to um, focus on building ourselves as well. All right? How can you really help somebody if you don't help yourself first, right? All right. Jesus told Peter, when thou art converted, then strengthen your brother. So when you become better, then you can help your brother to become better. All right? If you go through some things and you learn how to go through it according to God's word, now you can really help someone else because you have been in a living example. You've gone through those things and you can talk about that even the more. All right? So we need to build ourselves. We need to take time out for ourselves. Now, when we do this, we need to, um, it needs to not just be spiritual, but also naturally, we need to take care of ourselves. We need to build ourselves, all right? Mentally, we need to build ourselves, all right? Um, um, we, emotionally, we need to build ourselves as well. Okay, so some things you need to do to help yourself, not on, and physically, let me say that as well. Physically, we need to build ourselves. We need to make sure that we are healthy, all right, so that we, uh, we should have well-being, all right? We want to make sure that we're not carrying ailments and, or creating sicknesses um, into our physical body. So we have to take care of these bodies. That means we need to eat correctly. That means we need to do some exercising all right, so that these bodies can function as they were designed by God to function in a healthy manner. So we need to build our physical body, but then we also need to build our mental um, mental state. All right, all right. We need to build ourselves mentally as well. Okay, and then of course emotionally, we need to take care of our emotional needs. Tend to those things. Don't just overlook. Um, what's happening with you emotionally, all right? Look inside yourself, you know, ask God to help you to see things as you need to see them um, and to do whatever it is that you need to do so that um, emotionally you are okay. Because many things tend to happen to us in life and it disturbs us emotionally and we can't just overlook it, all right? Because those things need to be repaired. Those emotions need to be repaired. Or it causes damage and it can make us um, uh, start doing things in another area because uh, um, things are not fixed over in this area. Things can carry over, such as grief. Um, sometimes when people are grieving and they don't really want to face the grief, um, they might start drinking, you know, um, doing some promiscuous things. Anything to try to cover it up, to try to dull the sense of what they're really dealing with and going through. So if you don't deal with your emotional state, um, it will come out in other ways. And sometimes people don't know, well, I don't know why I'm doing this. I don't know why. But it's really because emotionally um, they have been shipwrecked and damaged and they were never repaired. 
okay they were never repaired now some people you know they do go see psychiatrists and things like that um and then there are those of us that rely on the lord um because we know that jesus is he is a he is a wonderful counselor all right and so he is a counselor i think he's the greatest counselor of all but i'm not saying don't go to a natural counselor that's not what i'm saying but he is the best counselor because he knows us inside and out and we got to tell the counselor all about us for them to kind of get an understanding but jesus already knows um and so either or whichever way and even if you get a natural counselor you should still be seeking the lord as well that he will lead them and guide them all right and that he will help you um to overcome what you need to overcome emotionally um so that you can have emotional stability all right you want to have emotional stability and so we need to build ourselves in these things sometimes if you have low self-esteem then now you need to build your self-esteem all right and there are books that you can read um you know um courses i guess that you can take whatever it, it takes for you to build your self-esteem and of course getting in the word of god and looking um at the word for those things that will help build your self-esteem okay so we want to make sure of that we want to make sure we educate our minds in things as well all right education it is an important thing and everybody don't have it but it is important that you educate yourself in some type of way um, i'm not saying that you got to go to college because you don't have to do that um, reading of books is a wonderful way to educate yourself um, and you can go to a library all right if you cannot afford to purchase books off of amazon or something like that you can go to a library all right and eat a prep free library um, and you can get some books for free go home and read those books and give you a limited time to read them and then you bring them back and then you can also check them out again all right and i think they might have an extension um thing that they do as well now okay so you can go in there and and, and read some books to educate yourself on some things and just about anything you want to know um there are books for it okay um and not only that just about anything you want to know you can google it as well okay so it's just so much out there that's free that you don't have to pay a dime to get so we're left without an excuse nowadays um, for not educating ourselves, okay? You can basically educate yourself just as well as someone that goes to college. You just have to take the time, all right, to do it, all right? And you can basically do it for free by yourself, okay? And there are courses in different areas of things that you can take and they are free. Um, you can go to Coursera. That's, that's one um uh, place you can go online and they have various courses and those courses are free and you can take them for free and if you want a certificate in it um, you do have to pay for the certificate um, and then if you want to actually go to the school itself and take classes um, you can do that as well all right so there there is so many ways ways out here now that we can educate ourselves all right and strengthen our mentality about some things all right, but spiritually, spiritually is the most important. It is the most important, all right? But God would that we would be whole and complete. But your spiritual being is most important. So that's really what we want to talk about today in building yourselves and saving others, all right? The Bible told us that we should build ourselves in, on, on, on our most holy faith, all right? The faith that we have in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We need to build ourselves in that, praying in the Holy Ghost, all right? Praying in the Spirit, all right? We want to make sure that we're praying in the Spirit. We're not just sending up words, but we want to pray in the Spirit. We want the Spirit to direct us as we are praying, all right? And then... Sometimes it just takes over, you know, you begin to speak in other tongues as the Spirit of God give utterance. And if it does that, allow the Spirit to have its way. Um, I've heard, you know, tell of people when it comes down to prayer and, um, you know, sometimes people are speaking in tongues. And I'm not talking about when we're doing like a, uh, a group online prayer. I'm not talking about that. If you're the one to pray, I'm not talking about that because if you're the one to pray, then we need you to speak English. He needs you speaking English. 
All right. So yes, we did. We need you speaking English so that all can hear that prayer. But when you're in private prayer and things like that, and you're not praying, um, you know, in that manner, then if you're going off in tongues and you're going off in tongues because he that speaketh in tongues speaketh unto the Lord. All right. But also tongues edify you. You edify yourself when you're speaking in other tongues as the spirit of God give utterance. Okay. Edification comes to that. You're building yourself up. All right. That's what edification is about. Building yourself up and speaking in tongues. It builds you up. All right. But it's a spiritual thing that happens and transpires when you are speaking in, in tongues. So let the Holy Spirit have its way. Okay. Let it have its way. Um, uh, if you're having your private prayer, don't try to make yourself speak English because people say you need to be talking in English. Um, no, you, if the tongues take over, let God have his way because the spirit knows what to say better than you do, better than I do. So allow God to have his way when we are in prayer, during our prayer time, our personal prayer time before him. All right. And you're having your devotions with the Lord. Um, I happen to think the best time to do that is early in the morning. All right. Get up earlier before everybody else does, before your day really starts and get before the Lord and have your devotions, you know, your worship. And then, you know, uh, your worship and your praise and then going into your prayer. And then after that, reading your word. Okay. But sometimes the spirit doesn't direct us in totally in that way. So when, you know, you get to start worshiping, sometimes the spirit just comes in um, and it takes over and you should let him take over. You should allow the Lord to take over that prayer. Um, and it just starts speaking in other tongues sometimes. And sometimes the Lord begins to give you scripture. And I think you should take time out to read those scriptures if that's what God is trying to deal with you with at that time. And then you can always go back down on your knees and pray. But we want to allow the spirit to direct us, all right? So we're going to be praying in the spirit, all right? And sometimes it takes a while to get out from the flesh to get into the spirit with the Lord, uh-huh, because all kinds of things become into your mind, and it's best to have a notepad along with you. I would like to say that when you get on your knees to pray, um, different things that you're supposed to do today um, starts to come to your mind, and you can just simply jot those things down so that it won't continue to be on your mind. All right, get that out, write it down. You can always go back to that later, okay, to get things off of your mind and to kind of free you up there, okay, because you want to be in that, you want to be in um, that mode with the Lord, okay, as the Spirit begins to take over. And as I was saying, sometimes it takes a while to get there. Sometimes, not always, but sometimes it does take a while to get there. And one of the ways I found that helps me out is to put on some worship music. That helps me. It helps me. All right. And it, it's not, it doesn't take that long before I'm in the flow with the spirit of the Lord. Um, once I'm listening to the worship music and I'm singing it, you know, within myself or singing it out loud um, to the Lord. Um, C.C. Winans, um, Bow Down and Worship Him, Agnes Day. That is like my favorite. That's like my favorite worship song. I play it over and over again. I love it. Um, and it just, it does it for me. It may not do it for you. Maybe another worship song does it for you. All right. So sometimes you may want to do that and it will help to put you where you need to be. All right. And that realm was the Lord. Okay. That's nothing strange or different. Um, the Lord used music in the word of God. All right as well all right so it's a good thing it's a good thing and if you don't want that then you know whatever works best for you you just want to make sure that you can get to a place um beyond your flesh all right and get into that heavenly space with the lord all right you want to have heaven down here on earth all right and you can you can feel his presence you want to feel his presence you want to be there in his presence all right um, and I can't tell you at all times you will necessarily, um, feel it right away. You know, sometimes, sometimes, you know, I'm praying and I may feel his presence, but I don't feel it, you know, greatly. But it's like when I'm done, 
I really feel the presence and I know that he's there. Um, but however, however the Lord blesses and touches you, then let him have his way. All right? Just let him have his way. So we want to build ourselves up on our most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. And so, therefore, as the Bible said, man ought to always pray, that's what the Lord said, and not to faint. All right? We're supposed to be praying on a consistent basis, consistently praying. All right? It shouldn't be um, not even a once-a-day thing, because throughout the day, we should be talking to the Lord. That will help build you up. That will help build you up. That helps us to build ourselves up as we talk to the Lord and the Lord talks to us. All right. He communicates back with us. Sometimes he's communicating through his word. Amen. Sometimes he communicates through way of prophecy. But however he communicates. Amen. We want the Lord to be able to communicate and we want those lines to be clear. All right. As we are before the Lord. And so building yourselves up. Sometimes there's other things that we need to do also in building ourselves up. So we're going to go to 2 Peter. 2 Peter. Second Peter, the first chapter, verse 4 through 10. I'm in the wrong place. Second Peter, the first chapter, verse 4 through 10. The Bible says, Wherefore are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith, Virtue, all right? And to virtue, knowledge. This, this is building. This is building yourself up. Adding to your faith, virtue. And to virtue, you're going to build knowledge, all right? And to knowledge, temperance, okay? So you got to have that control. And to temperance, patience. You got to know how to wait on the Lord. You got to wait patiently on the Lord. That means going without murmuring and complaining, all right, you got to add these things on. You got to build yourself up with these things. And to patience, godliness. And to godliness, brotherly kindness. All right, you got to be kind one to another. And to brotherly kindness, charity, which is love. All right, and love is a deed. It's a deed. For if these things, and I love this part right here. This is just so wonderful. Because if we do these things right here, we are going to make it in. Listen at this. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you, excuse me, that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. All right. So if these things above, all right, if we add, if we build these things into ourselves, adding to our faith virtue, and to virtue, knowledge, and to knowledge, temperance, and to temperance, patience, and to patience, godliness, and to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, charity. If these things be in us and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren, all right, nor unfruitful. So you're going to be fruitful. You're going to be a fruitful vine, all right? Jesus talked about the husbandman, all right? And he went around and he's looking He's looking, all right, at his vineyard, all right? And the Lord was saying that every branch in me, amen, that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. So, but if we're doing these things, we don't have to worry about the Lord taking us away, all right, from the vine, because we're producing fruit. But even though we produce fruit, he will purge us. And the purpose of that is so that we will bring forth much fruit. All right? Not just more, but much. That's what the Lord wants from his people. He wants an abundance because he is an abundant God. Remember the Bible said that he's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above anything we can actually even think. So 
Um, he wants us to produce abundantly. God believes in abundance. All you have to do is just simply look. Amen. Look at the things that God has planted and made down here on this earth. When you look at an apple tree, okay, you took one seed and you made a tree out of that, out of that apple seed, all right, but out of that apple seed, it produces a tree and the tree produces many apples on the tree and all of the apples have seeds with an S inside or S, not just a seed, but seeds. All right. So that's an abundance. So you can just take that. You can take, if you took all those seeds, um, from that apple tree, I mean, you could have a huge orchard of trees and which is only going to produce even more seeds. God believes in an abundance of things. Okay. And that's what he supplies an abundance over and beyond abundance of things. And so he wants us to be just that fruit. He wants us to be so fruitful that it's over and it's abundant and an abundance of fruit, the fruit of the spirit. Okay. Love, joy, peace, long suffering, meekness, temperance, gentleness, patience. All right. All of that. He wants to have all of that inside of all nine of the fruit of the spirit, but in abundance and abundance. He wants us to bring forth fruit. And that more abundantly. That's what the Lord is looking for out of us, his people. So if they be in us, it would make us that we would never be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind. Listen to that. But if you don't have these things, the Bible is saying that you are blind. All right. If you did not build these things into yourself. As the Bible told us to add to, add to, add to, add to, add to this, add to that, add to that, add, 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 add. But if you don't add these, then the Bible said that you are blind and cannot see afar off. And have forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. All right? Because you refused to add. You didn't add to your faith, virtue. Didn't add to your virtue, knowledge, and knowledge, and to your knowledge, temperance, and to your temperance, patience, to your patience, godliness. You didn't add into godliness, uh, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, charity. You have to add, you have to build on, build, 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 build. You have to build these things on, and we can't expect that they will just jump on us, okay? No, we have to build these things. We have to work on these things. We have to put an effort in to, to acquire all that God would have for us to have from him. All right. And also that is building ourselves up on our most holy faith because we have to seek the Lord. All right. We got to seek. All right. We got to ask. We got to knock. You seek, you shall find. You ask, you will receive. If you knock, the door will be open unto us. And so we need to do all three of those things. We need to seek, we need to ask, and we also need to not, uh, we need to not. All three of those things, because we need certain things to help build ourselves up in the Lord. So if we don't add these things, we will be barren and unfruitful. But he that lack of these things is blind and cannot see afar off and has forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. So he's forgotten it. Therefore, he must still be living in his old sins. And that is only because he refused to add. You, if you don't build yourself, you will find yourself going back to the baggy elements of the world. We'll find ourselves going back like a dog to his own vomit if we don't build ourselves. All right? We have to focus on building ourselves so that we do not find ourselves going backwards, opposed to going forward. Wherefore, the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. All right? You want to do everything you possibly can to make your calling and election sure, all right? You want it to be fixed. You want it to be stable. You don't want there to be any doubt that you are going to heaven when the Lord comes back or you should, if you should transpire prior to him returning. 
You don't want to have any doubt in your mind as to whether or not you're going to make it to heaven. So we have to give diligence to, to make our calling and election sure. And the way we give diligence to making our calling and election sure is by adding these things and building ourselves up with these things. For if you do these things, ye shall, and the word is never fall. If you build yourself, if I build myself, if I add, 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 then we will not be unfruitful. We will not be barren. We will be productive. We will bring forth much fruit. All right. And we also shall not fall, as it talked about. We shall not fall. You can't fall if you're adding. If you're adding it like the Lord said, add it, you cannot fall. It makes it not impossible for you to fall because you're adding, you're building and building and building. And it's not a building that the enemy can just kick over and kick down. All right? Nor just come in because you're building upon. And you're building upon a firm foundation. A firm foundation. So let's let's talk about that foundation. Go with me to 2 Timothy, the second chapter. Second Timothy, the second chapter. I'm going to read verse 19 to 21. The Bible says, Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. There is a foundation that is going to hold you and I up. It standeth sure. Just like a house needs a foundation. You don't want to build a house on sand, all right? The Bible talks about the man that did that. All right? One built their house on sand. And one built their house on a rock, which was the foundation. Okay? If you build your house on sand, the wind is going to come. The wind is going to blow. All right? Things are going to happen. And your house is going to fall. You will fail. Because you did not build on the right thing. You have to build on the right foundation. And that's Jesus Christ. All right. Jesus is the chief cornerstone. All right. The foundation has already been laid. So there's no more foundation to be laid. So we shouldn't be trying to new, talk about a new thing other than Jesus. So now we have to build on Jesus. We have to build on the word of God. We have to build on the doctrine that's in the word, the teaching that's in the word. We're called to build upon it. All right. And that we got to build upon it within ourselves, within ourselves. Wherefore, concerning the truth, I'm sorry, that was a verse ahead of that. Okay. But in a great house, uh, I didn't finish this, 19. Nevertheless, the foundation of God stands of sure, having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his, and let every one that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. So the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his, all right? And let every one that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. If you're going to call on the name of Jesus, the Bible says depart from iniquity. Stop sinning, all right? Stop sinning. That's a way to build yourself. You got to stop sinning. Sin turns you down. But when you walk away from sin, now you can build. And every time you go back to sin, you're turning your walls down again. 
And any tearing down walls, the devil want to get in there anyway. And he's liable to just walk on up in there because your walls have been torn down because you decided that you wanted to go back to a sinful lifestyle. So we want to make sure that we're building on the foundation of Jesus Christ, uh, which is Jesus Christ. All right. And we want to do this thing according to the word of God. But listen, but in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth and some to honor and some to dishonor. Okay, so now there is a categorizing here of things that are in a good house. There are vessels of gold and vessels of silver, um, but it's also vessels of wood vessels of earth and some to honor and some to dishonor if a man therefore purge himself from these okay you don't you don't want to you don't want to be wood you don't want to be one for dishonor all right you want to build yourself so that that's not what you will be you want to be gold and you want to be silver you want to be what god will have for you to be all right so you have to build in yourself. And one of the way to do it is to purge ourselves. I was talking about the husband man not long ago, how he will purge us. All right. That we may bring forth much fruit, not just more fruit, but that we may bring forth much fruit. All right. Purging. Purging is the clipping back and, you know, um, trimming down things like that, um, so that the thing can come back and blossom even more and produce even more fruit. You know, um, I, I take my knockout bushes, uh, for an example, on several occasions I've used them. Um, every year, basically, I have to cut them back. I have to cut them down. I mean, they, they grow, you know, they grow up, and then I have to cut them down to like a smaller bush. Um, and that is because I want them to produce even more. I want them to produce even more. All right. Now, this year, they didn't really do like I wanted them to do um, in abundance. But I got to go back next year. And also, you have to de-weed and all of that. Um, and weeding was my problem this year. Had more weeds um, than before uh, trying to deal with that, my knockout bushes. Um, but the purpose is so that they can come back and, and produce even more, all right? Be even better, um, having been cut back. And sometimes God has to kind of take us a little bit back, cut us back some, all right, so that we can come back, all right, and bounce back and be even better, so to speak, okay? So sometimes it seems like um, you're not really going forward, but life is kind of pushing you backwards, Um and taking some things away from you that perhaps you've accomplished, you've gained um, in life. And you find yourself like, oh my gracious, you know, um, might not feel good, but then you'll see yourself begin to produce in abundance. You'll see yourself growing. You'll see your growth and development in the Lord. So it takes all of that, all right, so that we can get to where we need to be. All right. So if you purge yourself, the Bible saying, from these things that is not like God would have it to be, you know, the wood and the, the earth and the being dishonorable, if we purge ourselves from that, he shall be a vessel unto honor and, sanctifi and sanctified and meet for the master's use. Listen to that. And prepared unto every good work, but only if we purge ourselves. See, God's not going to do everything. He's going to do some things, but some things are left up to us to do. Some things we need to purge ourselves, uh, get rid of, okay? We need to, we need to cut, cut ourselves back in some things that, that we're doing or whatever the case may be so that we can come back and produce and grow like God would have us to grow. An abundance, an abundance, an abundant way. All right, so you, you're going to be a vessel unto honor 
sanctify, which means set aside, set apart. And again, the Bible does tell us to sanctify yourself and the very God of heaven will sanctify you wholly. All right. W-H-O-L-L-Y. Completely. And meet for the master's use. Now we're gonna we're gonna we are going to be an honorable vessel. We're gonna be sanctified and we're gonna be meet for the master's use. If we do these things, if we build ourselves, if we add, like the Bible tells us to add, then we are going to be sanctified and meet for the master's use. We're gonna be ready for the Lord to use us. All right, we'll be in the proper position, in the proper place that the Lord will be able to use us without mess, without stuff, all right, in us. All right, we also assist in getting the junk out of ourselves, okay? Can't just expect that God is just going to do it. No, you got to get in that word. You got to wash yourself, wash yourself, wash yourself, all right? And allow your flesh to die. You have to kill it out with the word of God. As the Bible said, wherewith shall a young man cleanse his ways? By giving heed to the word of God. If the young man doesn't give heed to the word that he hear, all right, nothing changes. But when he gives heed to the word and he begins to apply the word, now he can be washed. And a washing can take place. And then he can become fit for the use of the master. But it's only if we build ourselves. It's only if we add to the things that God is giving unto us. We got to add. And we need to be prepared unto every good work. You know, the Bible says whatever your hands find to do, to do it. All right. Good work, good work, good work, good work. We make sure we're doing good work for the Lord that he might be pleased. So we've dealt with that foundation. It standeth sure. The Lord knoweth them that are his. And let everyone in the name of, the name of Christ depart from iniquity. All right. That is a building, that is growth, that is development, departing from iniquity, getting away from sin, staying away from sin, not allowing yourselves to go back into sin, the baby elements of this world, not going back like a dog to its own vomit and licking it back up again, all right? And as you build yourself, the stronger you become, all right? And yes, it has to tear down some things for you to become stronger even in the Lord. So it will create some pain, but it is worth it. It's just like when you go into a gym and you're trying to get bigger muscles, all right? The way you get bigger muscles is by tearing the ones you have down. You got to tear down the muscle and then you give time so that the muscle can heal. And as the muscle heals, it becomes bigger, all right? And you're beginning to be stronger, all right? Because that's called building. You're building yourself up. But you got to tear down in order to build up. All right? You got to tear the flesh down in order to build up spiritually. You got to keep tearing down your flesh, tearing down your flesh, tearing down your flesh, tearing down your flesh. Those things that the flesh want to reach out to do that is not of God, you got to tear it down. You got to tear it down. Die daily. That's how we die daily. All right? Dying daily to our flesh. Because we want to get to the place where God can really use us without our flesh trying to be involved and getting involved. Because God is not looking for us to try to get the glory because he wants the glory out of our lives. But he really can't get it if we're not willing to do what it takes. If we're not willing um, to build ourselves up. If we're not willing um, to allow that tearing down. All right? And then coming back and recuperating um, and, and becoming uh, bigger and stronger in the Lord. That's what it takes. And that when you see muscle builders, they've done that over and over and over and over and over again. It depends on how, how big you want to be in God. All right. And I'm not talking about fame and all of that when I say big, big in God. But I'm talking about basically in doing his will. Doing those things that you know pleases him. Becoming more like Jesus. Jesus said, I always do the things that please my father. And we should want the same thing. We should always want to do the things that pleaseth the Lord. 
We should always want to do that. But if we really mean that, then we will do and have due diligence and tearing ourselves down in the right way. When I say turn yourself down, I'm not talking about your self-esteem. I'm not talking about like that. All right. I'm talking about putting a hurting up on this flesh. All right. That is contrary to the will of God. That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about not allowing yourself to go into that carnal mindset, knowing that to be carnal minded is to be enmity against God. All right. If carnal mindset does not agree with God, does not want God's will, will not do God's will because it cannot be obedient nor submissive to his will. It's said that a carnal mind is not, is, it is not subject to God, neither indeed can it be. It's impossible. So you have to get a spiritual mindset. And that's why you have to allow your flesh to die so that the spirit can reign. All right? So that the spirit can help and assist in overthrowing um, the things of the flesh. Got to build. Got to build. It's very necessary. And it needs to be a daily process of getting into the word of God and reading it for ourselves and giving more heed to those things that we read <laughs> Um, and even that we hear, he said, any time should we allow those things to slip away from us? If we read this word, it will build us. It will do what it's designed to do. It will not, it will build us. It will strengthen us. It will heal us. It will deliver us. Oh, it will free us. He that the sun make it free is free indeed. Well, if you, if the sun is making you free and if the sun is the word and the word is the sun, then it is the word that makes us free. But we have to give the earnest heed to it. We got to listen to and, and, and think on and meditate on the words of Scripture to build ourselves up. Amen. Go with me to 1 Timothy, the fourth chapter. 1 Timothy, the fourth chapter. First Timothy, the fourth chapter, verse 12 to 16. All right, because we also, in reading the scripture in Jude, we're supposed to be talking about building yourself and saving others. When we got to that 23rd verse, he said, and others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, Hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. All right. You should not be taking pleasure in other men's sins. All right. You should hate sin. Even if it's in yourself, you should hate sin. Want to get rid of sin. All right. Be delivered from sinning. But he says here, and others save with, with fear, pulling them out of the fire Hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. All right? We, we want to make sure that we're doing this to help save other people. All right? We're going to save them with fear. All right? With the fear of God. We're going to save them. Not wanting to see them go to hell. All right? So we're going to reach out to grab some people. All right? Sometimes it's your brother, your sister in Christ. Sometimes it is those that are in the world. Amen. That need to be saved. All right. But we have to do what we need to do. First of all, on ourselves as well. We need to build ourselves up so that we'll be ready. As I said, and meet for the master's use that he can use us anytime and anywhere with whomever he desires to use us with. That we may help them. That we may pull them back. Amen. Um, from the clutches of hell. Because once you get in there, you're not getting out. So we want to get to them before they go. Grab a hold to them fast, quick, and in a hurry before they get there because they are on their way. Amen. Pulling them out of the fire. You know, pull them out, pull them out because that's where they're on their way. And hating the garments spotted by the flesh. Hating the sinful garments that they are wearing. See, when we get saved, the Bible say, put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. But they don't have on the Lord Jesus Christ. They have on a spotted garment of sin. They're not wearing the Lord Jesus Christ. 
You and I are supposed to wear the Lord Jesus Christ wherever we go. All right? So therefore, his righteousness shall shine out of our lives. All right? He will help build in us the things, amen, that is needed to please the Father. Being as though he said he always do the things to please his Father. So he can give us what we need to build upon. And we also will be able to say we always do the things that please our Father, which is in heaven. But hating the garments spotted by the flesh. If you live in your flesh, your garments are going to be spotted. They will not be white. They will be filthy and they will be dirty. So we already know we cannot afford to be in our flesh. And we have to stay away from fleshly things. The Bible said flesh and blood shall not inherit eternal life. So if we're going to get into the flesh, then we wouldn't be able to inherit eternal life. Because it is through the spirit of God. So we got to make sure that we build ourselves, all right? Be encouraged to build yourself. As I said, in the natural, in the physical, emotional, mental, build yourself, all right? Make yourself strong, just like those bodybuilders. Make yourself stronger than what you have ever been. Get in that word, read that word, digest that word, pick that word apart, all right? Get things to, 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 to separate the word, to pick it apart so that you can get a better understanding of what the Lord is saying. Get, get a commentary, all right? Matthew Henry is a good one. All right, I use that very often. Matthew Henry commentary. You can get it. Let it elaborate, all right, on scripture for you. And if there's something that shouldn't be, then you eat the meat and you throw away the bones. But for most, for the most part, Matthew Henry is a good commentary. Might run into a few niches here and there, uh, but for the most part, it's very good. So pull people out of the fire. Their garments are spotted by the flesh. But we got to help people to understand that they ought not to be walking in the flesh, but they need to walk. In the spirit. All right. Let's go to the book of Proverbs. Proverbs. Proverbs, the 11th chapter. Eleventh chapter. Hmm. The eleventh chapter of the book of Proverbs, and I believe I should be at verse thirty. The fruit of the of the righteous is a tree of life. Listen at that. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. All right? You're going to produce life when you have righteous fruit. You've done the right type of building. The fruit of righteousness is a tree of life. And he that winneth souls is wise. All right? There's a way to win those souls. There's a way to pull those souls away from hell's fire. Some people are right on the edge. They got, they, they, they on the edge. They got one foot almost in or whatever, as they would say. But we got to pull them back out if we can. But, of course, that's up to them as well. If they want to escape the damnation of the world because be it or not want it or not it's going to happen because the lord is soon to come and now 
And now more than ever, we need to be building ourselves up because we never know what's going to take place even in our own country. All right, we're on Zoom and all those things right now, but we don't know how bad things are going to get as far as religious rights are concerned. All right, and the church have been underground before and it may have to go underground again. Who knows? Because they may start doing things over here in the United States to religious people, Christians, um, that they're doing in other countries. And so they have to do these things in private. But no matter what comes or what goes, if we build ourselves, then we can be prepared. The Bible says prepare for war in the time of peace. And how do you do that? By building yourself up. How do you prepare for your next test? By building yourself up with the word of God and reading of the word and staying in prayer and fasting. These things will help us. So we don't have to worry about falling prey to the adversary because the enemy is not going to leave us alone. He is going to continue to try to bother us and bother us and bother us. He tries to wear out the saints as the Bible talks about. He were trying to wear the saints of God out. He wants you to give up, give in, throw in the towel. But when you build yourself up, you can handle more. You have more stamina. All right? You have more strength. So we got to build. We got to build. We got to build. Building is so, so necessary. He that went of souls is wise, and God will give you that wisdom. Sometimes you got you got to even build on that so you can capitalize on that. All right, you got to do some research. You got to look. It's like, what's the best ways to win the souls to God? Sometimes you can go to someone that's in your church, in your assembly, or somebody else's church in the assembly if your church don't have that. All right, to see, well, what is it that y'all do um, to win the souls, and you know? Um, sometimes we can set in on things and just watch it being done. All right. Through others, watching it being done through others. So we want to make sure, all right, that we're able to win these souls to Christ. Because that's exactly what the Lord said that they would be able to do. Um, once the day had received the power of God, that they would be witnesses unto him and Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria um, into the uttermost parts of the earth. So they became witnesses for the Lord all over the place. But they had to build themselves. They had to build themselves. All right. So we're going to make sure that that is something that we are focusing on. And that don't mean you just read your Bible today. You don't read it tomorrow. You're not going to read it next week. And things like that. We don't have time for that. We have to be built. We have to be ready. We have to be stable. We have to be strong. And yes, our sufferings also help build us. Those are the things that help build us. But we have to realize that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. It's not even worthy of it. The Bible tells us to count it as light afflictions when we're going through different things. When we fall into doubt of temptations, we ought to still be glorifying the Lord. Why? Because it's building something within us. And if we take the time to break down the test, then we'll understand it better by and by. We'll get a better and clearer understanding as to why we had this test, why was the test needed, what was the test designed to do. Um, and think whether or not you have actually allowed it to do what it was meant to do. Because the, the Lord is not allowing the devil to bring it for your demise. All right? That's not what the Lord is allowing. He's allowing the devil to bring it so that we can grow and develop more and more and become more and more like Christ. Again, as I said before, he is our measuring stick. Stop measuring yourself by other people and then think that you have an excuse for what you're doing and what you're not doing, all right, and saying, well, I'm not doing what they're doing. It doesn't matter what you're doing, what they're doing. The measure stick is Christ. Are we doing what Christ would have done? You know, that cliche will never grow old, I would say. 
when they say, what would Jesus do? Sometimes you need to ask yourself that in a situation. What would Jesus do? How would Jesus handle this situation? And that's go for the development in itself. Because you know there was a time you wasn't asking no questions. You didn't even care. You just were trying to do what you want to do. Which is not the will of God. We got to place ourselves in the right place. And stay in the right place. Alright. The Lord said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For my yoke is easy and my burdens are light. Alright. He said, and learn. Okay. So as we learn, we're building. The more we learn of the Lord, the more we are being built on the inside. He that hungereth and thirsts after righteousness shall be filled. But you got to have a hunger. You have to have a thirst. If you don't have a hunger and a thirst for righteousness, then you're not going to be righteous. You could care less. But when you have that hunger, you're looking for it. You know, you're looking for the righteousness. You're looking for it. You're seeking after, like, where is it? Can I get more? I need more. All right? Because I'm hungry and I'm thirsty. This is a spiritual hunger and a spiritual thirst. Amen? For the righteousness of God. It says, seek that first. I want more of God. I want more of him, more of him, more of him, more of him, more of his will, more of his ways. Want to be closer to the Lord. This is what God wants from us. And sometimes that takes building because some people, they don't really hunger and thirst. They don't really want to pray. All right. And so what that means is you have to build yourself and you have to map out that time. All right. So that you can do that every single day. That you'll have a prayer life. Every single day. You need time to pray. You need time to read the word. All right? You need time to read so that you can be being built up on the inside. And as you do a thing, it becomes easier as you do it. And But when you first get started, sometimes it's kind of difficult. But if you hang on in there and build it into yourself on a consistent basis, like, nope, flesh, you're not going to do that. You're not going to do this. Um, you are going to do what the word of God would have you to do. Building yourself up with that. Focusing on the word. Not on your will, but the will of God. That's how we build ourselves. We stay focused on what he said. All right? We don't want to deviate and begin to focus on what the flesh thinks. Because the, whatever the flesh thinks, it doesn't matter. It doesn't change anything. Because the word of God has already been settled in heaven. So what our flesh is thinking, it doesn't matter. We got to speak that that God has spoken. Say what God has said. Do his perfect will. Reach out to help other people. We have been talking about I am my brother's keeper. And this sometimes it is your brother. Amen. And the Lord that you have to reach out and grab. All right. Because they are headed in the way of destruction. You got to reach out and you got to grab them. All right. And let them know, hey, this is not where you want to be. This is not where you want to go. I see you headed in the wrong direction. I am my brother's keeper. And we need to strengthen our brothers. And when I speak of brothers, I'm not talking about gender. All right. It's just brethren in Christ. All right. In the body. We're all in the body of Christ together. And we all need to build ourselves and then we can help other people. And mentioning Peter and mentioning Peter again, as Jesus said unto him, he said, Simon, Satan desires to have you that he may sift you as wheat. But I pray for you that your faith fail not. All right. The Lord don't want our faith to fail in him while we're going through a sifting process. You don't want that to happen. But the only way it's not going to really happen is if we build ourselves up. Because the time is going to come. The winds are going to blow. The breakers are going to dash. Storms are going to rise. People are going to mistreat you. There will be tribulations. All right? There, there will be tests. There will be trial. So we have to get that in our mind. The Bible said, think it not strange concerning the fiery trials, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. All right? It's not strange. It's the same things that's happening to you and I are the same things that is also happening to our other brethren that are in this world. 
So that's where the sharing of the testimonies also come in. Because when I hear about the goodness of God in your life and how he brought you out of what I'm currently in, then it helps me to grasp a hold to even more faith, to build more faith into myself, all right, that I can, I can grow. And then I can also help others. Because it's all tied together. It's all link, 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 link. One thing is linked to, linked to the other thing. But if we fail to do the one thing, then we mess up the whole chain, the whole program. We mess up the whole thing. Because we're not building what we need to build. And Lord knows we need to build unity. We need to build unity, togetherness in the body of Christ. We need to build it, build it, build it, build it, build it. All right? We do need to build that wall. We need to build that wall of unity. And we need to keep it built. We need to keep it stable. We can't afford to allow the enemy to come in between you and I in the body of Christ. And sometimes you are more built up than other people are built up. And so you just got to gotta give them a pass sometimes and understand um, that they just have not arrived yet. They're not at the place where God is going to take them. If they want to be saved, they will arrive to that place. All right? Just remember that. When people come in as well as we, who is perfect? Absolutely nobody. All right? We still have some issues that we need to deal with. So understand that people are human beings and they have to be built and they have to start building themselves. And you may be stronger than them in one area than the other. And, but guess what? They might be stronger than you in one area than, than, a, than another. Okay? So where is your strong in one area? You can't just put somebody down because they're not strong in that area. Just pray for them and ask God to help them to get to where they need to be. And knowing that they have to build themselves up. And it's a constant state of building. Everything that happens, every test, every trial, it comes to build us. It comes to make us. It comes to mold us. It comes to shape us. It's a building process. It's a building process. So we got to build ourselves. Can't expect that somebody's always going to be there to build you per se. Sometimes you got to build yourself. Sometimes you got to encourage yourself. All right. You got to build yourself up, encourage sometimes to step out on the word of God. All right. Because sometimes our faith, it could become greater, but we're not building on it. We're not building on it. We're not putting it to the test. And you gotta put you gotta you gotta try it out. You understand what I'm saying? If you that like they say, if you don't use it, you lose it. So you gotta use what God has given unto us. We have to use those things so that we can be built up and so that we can stand. Because Jesus is coming back, and he's on his way back soon, and we need to get ready. We need to get ready because ready or not. He is still going to come. And we already see the signs of the time. We already see it happening. We're already looking out here. And we can see how it's moving closer and closer and closer to the tribulation time. It's moving closer and closer there. And things are being set up in the world. So if we can see that happening, I think now more than ever, we need to realize that it's building time. It's building time. And we don't want to sit back like Israel did and say that it's not time to build. I'm talking about building ourselves now. It was a temple that they needed to build. But we are the temple. All right. Now, it may also be a natural building temple as well that we need to work on. But I'm talking mainly right now about us. It's time to build. It is time to build. All right? And we need to do it now. We need to do it fast. We need to do it quick. And we need to do it in a hurry. Because things will get worse as, as we continue on. And we got to be ready or we won't be able to stand. And people are going to be falling by the wayside even the more. 
if they have not built. If they have not built, they're going to fall by the wayside more and more. They're not going to be ready. They're not going to be able to sustain. They're not going to have the endurance through the, the tests and the trial, the weights that will be placed perhaps upon them or their family or, or their churches. That's why it's time to build now. Prayer, fasting, reading of the word, getting the teaching, getting the preaching. Taking out of yourself what you know shouldn't be there. Laying aside every weight and the sin which doeth so easily beset us. Running with patience the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus who is the author and the finisher of our faith. You got to take some stuff out and you got to put some stuff in. You got to lay some stuff down. You got to pick up some stuff. Lay the wrong stuff down. The weights and the sins. Lay it down. It's not even worth it. All this sinning going on, it's, it's, it's not worth it. It's, it's time to stop that stuff. Because tomorrow may be too late. You need to stop today. And that's the truth. Who knows what tomorrow holds for you? Who knows what tomorrow holds for me? So let us build now, build ourselves now. But also remember that we are our brother's keeper and we are supposed to try to help somebody else make it in, not just ourselves. All right? We're not supposed to just be selfish, but we're also supposed to try to help others to make it in to the kingdom. But make sure you save yourself from this untoward generation and save them that will hear you. Some will listen, some will heed, but there will be some that will turn a deaf ear to what you have to say. There are some that heap into themselves teachers having itching ears because they want to hear what they want to hear that tickles their flesh. And that's all they want to hear. And so they you can't make it off to satisfying your flesh. Somebody got to tell you about your nasty, stinky flesh. They got to tell you about it that it ain't no good. That's just true. There is no flesh saved. Nobody's flesh is saved. And there is no good thing that dwelleth in me. That's what Paul said. That is in my flesh. All right? So we got to make sure that we get out of the flesh and we get into the spirit of God so that we can move like God would have for us to move. All right? So that God can bring an increase in our lives. Sin decreases you. But the things of God always increase you, all right? To be a better person, to do better, to be better, to live better, to act better, to think better, to walk better, to talk better. The things of God, that's building and building. The more you build, the better you become, all right? And you got to tear down some stuff. You got you to cut some stuff away. You got to get rid of some stuff. All right, sometimes you're trying to hold on to pieces of your flesh that you know should have been gone. But you've been holding on all these years to this little bit of stuff. I don't want to let go of everything. I just need something. Let it go. Let it go. And become that brand new, all the way new person that the Lord is calling for. As the Bible says, behold, all things become new. And some of us, he's trying to make us brand new. He want all things to become new. And we're still trying to hold on to the old us. All right? The old. And the Lord is saying, no, I want the new. I need you to become new. I need you to become new. I need you to become new. All right? Because I want to put, this like taking new wine. You don't want to put it in the old vessels, as the Bible said. Okay? Because there's nothing to build upon if it goes in an old vessel. Because if it goes into the old, then when the wine expands, it will destroy the bottle that it was in because it was old. You know, they used to what they used to use, the material that they used to use. It couldn't expand anymore because it had already expanded to its capacity. All right? And we don't want to be at a place where we have been expanded to our capacity all right? We want God to be able to enlarge us in him. We still have more work to be done. 
But sometimes God is trying to get us to a place of enlargement, but we won't let go of the old stuff. I'm not talking about the old stuff that is not meant to be gotten rid of. Okay, that's not what I'm talking about. All right, but it's some old stuff that's laying around inside of you, dead stuff, dead weight, that God wants you to get rid of. And you're still holding on to it. And the Lord is saying, I cannot put new wine into old skins. I need to put the new wine, the new stuff that I want to give you. Because I want you to grow more. You understand? I want you to grow. I want you to develop. I'm trying to get you to build. I'm trying to get you built up. And you got to work with the Lord with this. This building process. Because he want to put the new wine in. But you won't allow him to make you new so he can put the new wine in you. All right? You still hold on to every strife, backbiting, jealousy, hatred, unforgiveness, and all this stuff. That's all junk. Years over past and you still got it. All junk. The Lord is saying, let it go, let it go, let it go, let it go. Because I cannot build you over all this junk. And you can't even build yourself over all this junk. You, you're going to be stumbling over all this mess. All right? You want a straight, a straight pathway so that God can do what he wants to do in your life. All right? So that you can say, Lord, fill me up. I'm empty. Fill me up. All right? Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up. And you want it to overflow with the things that he has for you in today. Not the yesterday, but in today. All right? In the present. All right? Sometimes we got to be like Paul. We got to forget those things that are behind. We got to reach to those things that are before. We got to press toward the mark for the prize of the high call of God, which is in Christ Jesus. But in order to do it, we have to build ourselves. And so when God begins to pour the new wine, if it's a new vessel, you know, you want to stay fresh and alive in Christ. You want to be fervent in the Lord. All right. And so he began to pour the new wine into the new vessel because it's a process that's just go over and over and over and over again. He's going to make you newer and newer and newer and newer as he has to so that you can expand the new you. All right. Those old mindsets that you used to have. God is saying, that is not the mindset I want you to have. For this day and this time, you have to get a new mindset. All right? You got to get a new zeal. You got to get a new press. You got to get a new drive. All right? Because it's a new day. And then he can pour this new wine in you and more of his anointing and more of his spirit and it can overflow you and you have the capacity to expand as God is doing what he wants to do in your life. You're being built more and 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 more. See, God has no limitations. And so why would you want to be limited? As long as we are here in this world, we should be growing and developing more and more. Becoming better. Not getting to a place where uh, we're just stopped. We want to make sure that we have enough room for God to keep doing and keep doing and keep doing until he takes us out of here. Amen. I want to stay fresh and new in the Lord. Amen. As things begin to change. Now the word doesn't change. Not the word. All right, the word remains the same always, but there, there's, there's better understandings that we haven't even gotten to yet. There are deeper revelations that we haven't even gotten to yet for some of us. You understand? Sometimes he's taking you deeper in love. He's taking you deeper with wisdom, knowledge, with understanding, taking you deeper in your faith, taking you deeper in kindness, taking you deeper in joy and peace, and long-suffering, and that gentleness, and that meekness, and that temperance, all of that stuff, he's taking you deeper with it. He's developing you more and more. You're growing and growing and growing, all right? You're, you're growing because you're allowing yourself to be built, and you're building yourself as well. Amen. At this time, we're going to ask if you would to 
Go to Gibbetify. I pray that something has been said, amen, tonight that help you to grasp a hold to some more strength and give you more determination, all right, to build yourself up. Build, 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 build. I know, like, going to the gym is not always easy, all right? And if it's not easy in the natural, you know it's not always easy in the spiritual, all right? But it's a necessary thing. It needs to be done. All right? And it's just some things nobody else can do for you, not even God. Will he do it? Some things God is not going to do for you. You're going to have to do for yourself along with his help. All right? Build yourself and save others. Don't leave other people out. The world needs to be saved. And the Bible declares that we are the light of the world. A city that sit on a hill cannot be hid. All right? And neither do men take a candle and put it under a bush. All right? But they set it out that it may give light to the whole house. So that's you and me. That's you and me. When our lights are so shine before men that they may see our good works and glorify our Father which is in heaven. Because they will see what the Lord has done on the inside of us. They will see that. And they will see just how great God is through the life that we live and how we have overcome. And they can see how we have built ourselves up. How we have allowed the Lord to have his way. Amen. Take this word of God unto yourself today. Hide it in your heart that you might not sin against him. All right, build yourself and save others. All right, I hope you've gone to your Givelify app, your Cash app, and been a blessing. If you haven't, then we ask you to do that right now. Be a blessing to the ministry. We appreciate you just for coming. We know we got a later start. We was having some difficulties trying to do what we needed to do to get online um, this evening. All right. Remember, we love you, but God loves you best. Be blessed in the Lord.